Good luck. Nothing good. Thank you. Wait for my slide. Hello, my name's Angelia. It's okay to ask. I am pregnant. I know that I know that takes a little while, but it's not too many porters or IPAs, so I'm looking forward to when I can do that again. I am a gestational surrogate, is what they call it. People often ask me why did I decide to be a surrogate. Some days I ask myself that as well. Um, some people like to like they dream about traveling the world. They dream about going and um, climbing Mount Everest. I just wanted to have a baby for somebody. That was my big dream. It happened about. 18 years ago, I was 19, the doctor handed me my first beautiful daughter and he goes, you are a baby making machine. <laughs> and I in my twisted head said, yes I am and I will do that. About 18 years later, my path began, I ran into a friend who actually was a surrogate and she connected me and showed me like where to begin and I said, all right, we're going to do this. I don't think my husband will kill me through it. My kids don't want a little baby brother anymore, so we're good. This was about the best family photo we had, though we had to start a process It felt like Match.com. Had to put up family photos, hoping not to scare anybody away, and answer all sorts of questions about us. And then I had to decide, well, who was I willing to have a baby for? Does it matter if it's a same-sex couple? Does it matter if they're older? Is it okay if it's a single dad or a single mom? Do I care about race or ethnicity? Those were a lot of questions that I had to deal with, my husband and I did. Finally, the company decides, we've got a match. They send us somebody's profile, my profile got sent to somebody else. Lots of discussions, can we do this, should we not do this? Four different profiles my husband and I went through before finally we found somebody. I thought we were good. I thought that was the hard part. Then I found out, no, that's just the beginning. So then they start asking me questions like, how much is your uterus worth? And what if you just lose one fallopian tube? Or what if you die? How much are you worth? So everything had to be put on paper. Everything had to be legalized. And it was one of those times where this in and of itself almost made me lose it. <laughs> That's how I felt on contract signing day in front of the attorney. I could literally hear the clicking of the belt go across my lap and I went, all right, I've got a choice now. I can either decide to enjoy this or I can look like that the whole time. And honestly, I feel like that. We were sent to Connecticut for the first time to meet the parents, and then to be told, these are all the drugs I get to start taking. They don't tell you that before you sign the contract, by the way, so I'm telling you now if you're interested. <laughs> this was my daily routine. Freeze my butt, insert oil into a, a needle, change the gauge, don't forget, even if it's right before hot yoga, which I did once, insert it, and then massage with a hot washcloth and hopefully you won't be sore. The bruises were amazing. Then we go to the transfer. These are actually uh, actual photo. There's a boy and a girl right there. And they put it inside you and pray that they stick. That's what they say. I hope the baby sticks. First time didn't work. Second time did. Finally, these parents who've waited almost 15 years for a little baby find out that I'm pregnant and they get to enjoy that. Right? Yeah. I get to enjoy, what does it feel like at 37 to be pregnant? <laughs> that was my first trimester. If you had any conversations with me at all, I, all I was thinking about was what I was going to eat next or when I got a nap. <laughs> yeah. I did have my boss's buy-in on this. And I've thanked him several times for not firing me in this process. <laughs> Second trimester, this is me. Oh, your stomach looks a little big, but your youngest is 16. Hmm. Are you eating more? And so, yes, I was growing a baby. And then I had questions like, really, you're a surrogate. Why? Did you just need more money? Yeah. All the while trying to have conversations with the parents who live 2,500 miles away that I've never met before, literally felt like talking through a tin can. In, in addition, we had to figure out, do I want to go deep with these people or do we stay shallow? And yet it's so intimate, right? Now we're in the process a few weeks away where they get their little baby, and then I get a void in my stomach. And I have to go, OK, at the birth, who cuts the cord? Who holds the baby first? What am I going to do in the, in the hospital room? I know I'm packing wine. <laughs> Just telling you that. And I get to wonder, what does it feel like after that? And it leaves me spinning. Lots of questions in my head. Haven't been there yet. Am I going to look back and be glad that I did it? 
Am I going to have a conversation with the parents in 10 years learning about their little boy, or is this the end? And those are all questions I won't know, probably until they happen. So thank you. Woo!